Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Adam and Eve are Garden of Eden Adam underscore and underscore Eve Garden underscore of underscore Eden See also Evolution Contact Report 007 Well, you are right with your view that the human beings of the earth are not descendants of the apes. They were partially begotten by our forebears, who also mixed themselves with earth beings who were simply called Eves at that time. A designation that means nothing other than the bearing women or the one giving birth. But the earth beings at that time were of the most diverse forms and kinds. Some of them were completely wild creatures of human-like forms, some of which had been marooned on the earth in earlier millennia by our forebears, that is, their descendants. The Eves were besides earth-created hominid living creatures, nothing more than very wild descendants of those marooned thousands of years ago, from whom at that time any tools were taken away. They were like wild animals that lived in large hordes. When our forebears finally settled on the earth, they broke a strict law and inflicted gavalt on these beings. This means that they cast their spell on the female beings, who despite their wildness were somehow beautiful and mated with them. From this, the first higher developed forebears of today's human beings emerged. They were called Adam in the old language of the forebears, which means human being of earth. For the first of them, this designation then remained as his name, and you still use it today. Contact Report 009 Forbidden and secretly, they went out and captured Earth-created life forms, but so also turned wild or mutated beings, which were very distant descendants of former human beings from the outer space. The female creatures, beautiful in their wildness, were tamed and copulated with or fertilized with genetical manipulation by the leaders who called themselves celestial sons. Case by case, depending on their own races, they thus created mutated creatures, completely new life forms that were of dwarfish stature, very gigantic or similar to animal forms. Semjasa, the supreme leader of all sub-leaders, copulated with an EVA, a female creature who, according to his understanding, was still preserved as the most human-like and also quite beautiful one. The descendant of this act was of male gender and a human being in good form. Semjasa called him Adam, which is tantamount to human being of Earth. Another copulation of the same kind brought forth a female creature, and in later years, Semjasa determined that these two atoms had to mate together. In the meantime, however, many other creatures of the same kind were conceived, who banded together into large groups and tribes. From them, today's humankind developed, which was already at its ur beginning, according to its races distributed to the most different continents. Contact Report 069 well, then is it also correct that Noah was around 3.10 meters tall, while Adam actually measured around 5 meters? Sure. Only Adam was less than 5 meters tall. He was still a little more than a meter shorter than that measure. Contact Report 230 One more question about the Eve-Adam apple. Simya Say said that at the place where Adam was conceived there were no apples. Where do actually those originate that we have in Europe today? In fact, there were no apples in the area where Adam was conceived. Concerning the European apples, these originate from the area of Alma-Ata in the Soviet Union. The primary ancestor form of the apples was the wild apple Malus Siversi, if I'm not mistaken. 
Contact Report 492. Somewhere there was the Four Streamland, with the so called Garden of Eden, which was also stolen from the Mesopotamian and Sumerian legends and put into the Bible. The Four Stream country was so called because the Euphrates, the Tigris, and the rivers Piro and Jihon, or whatever they were called, flowed through it. The four rivers flowed there somewhere into a delta, but today the Persian Gulf, respectively the Arabian Gulf, as it is also called, exists there, but as of today, in the year 2010, it was first created about 8,000 years ago by a tremendous natural catastrophe, in which, as in the case of the various other floods, tremendous wild waters surged for thousands of years, thousands of years, and even for more than 100,000 years. Contact Report 695 Sfoth explained to me then that in pre-biblical times, more than 5,000 years ago, the whole huge area down there in the south of Iraq, where the city of Basra is also situated on the river Shat al-Arab, which flows into the Persian Gulf about 100 kilometers away, all the way down to Dilmun, or to the east coast of today's Bahrain, was ruled by the people of the Blackheads, who called themselves Sagiga Note Bernadette. Sumerians because of their black hair ornaments. The whole large area was an unusually fertile and completely green area with a diverse animal and plant world, so to speak a huge paradisiacal natural kingdom with fields, meadows and forests. Dilmun, today's Bahrain, was also a large city in pre-biblical times and an important trading center for its strategically favorable location on the sea trade route between Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley was ideal, and also promoted the prosperity of the entire country, from which many food products were obtained and shipped. The then flourishing and green region was also blessed with a large supply of fresh water from artesian springs, which, however, have dried up today. Sfoth explained to me that this then vast fertile and paradisiacal area was that which is referred to in the Bible as the Garden of Eden, and where Adam and Eve are said to have been created. This Adam-Eve story, however, your father explained, did not lead back to the Garden of Eden, and thus not to the giant paradisiacal area far above the Persian Gulf down to Dilmun, or today's Bahrain, but rather to the Babylonians, who invented this fable, which was then adopted by other peoples of that time, on the one hand, and on the other hand stolen from the ancient Hebrews, and later practiced as the story of the origin of human beings in the Torah and even later by the Christians in the Bible. Sfath said at the time that the original Garden of Eden Adam-Eve fable had corresponded to a completely different version, but which I have largely forgotten, which is why I want to ask you whether you are familiar with this version and whether you can give it to me again. The basis for it originated in Dilmun, namely by creating a legend that described twelve clans that came with all their relatives from a foreign region beyond the Great Mountains, note Billy. The Persian Zagro Mountains bordering Iraq are the only ones in that region above the Persian Gulf, high in the north and towards sunset, note Billy. This indication points to Turkey's being the only one in the region above the Persian Gulf. Billy. This refers to Turkey after which two young human beings, a woman named Udnara and a man named Udnadistin, who were very fond of each other, planted their first large garden together, planted all kinds of fruit and vegetables, and soon produced two offspring, who were named Nerafton and Beratin. These went as young men to look for wives in other areas and returned with their wives and other human beings to Dilmun after which, slowly over many decades, the whole paradisiacal land was settled and became known everywhere as paradise, especially because from Dilmun a very active trade was carried on with various other countries, 